Hey guys, Eddie here, and welcome back to Cornhole 101. For lesson three, we're gonna talk about how to break in your cornhole bags. Let's get into it. The reason we break in our cornhole bags is when you first get them, the materials are stiff as they have not been worked in at all yet. As you start to work them in, they'll start to feel more comfortable to hold in the hand, they'll start to get more floppy, which will make them a lot more hole friendly, and they'll start to play the way that they're meant to be played at the speeds they're meant to be played at. This is very important when you're playing in an event that the bag does exactly what you're wanting it to do. The first method to breaking them in is just by throwing them. It's what most manufacturers recommend and it's what most players recommend if you have the time to do so. It'll break in naturally to where the point that you can get it exactly where you want without the fear of breaking them in too much. The only negative is it takes a little bit longer to do so and you have to throw a lot of games to get them to the point you want to. But every single time that you throw a bag, it'll hit the board and slowly break in that material, which will get it to the point that you want it to eventually. The second method to break in bags is just to tumble dry them. Uh, because the bags aren't wet at all, you don't need to tumble dry with any heat. So I tend to turn the heat off. I usually just throw them in there, make sure that the lint trap is clean. You don't want any random lint coming out. I usually throw in with some dryer balls to let them tumble around a little bit and set it for about an hour to an hour and a half on a no heat tumble. This will simulate the action of throwing them for an hour to an hour and a half and just really help loosen up the fabric a little bit. When I mentioned tumbling in any of my other break-in methods, everything I did here is the exact same, except instead of having the heat off, sometimes I put the heat on low if the bags are a little wet. Just helps dry them out and for me, softens them up, heats them up a little bit. I like the way that they feel, but I would never go above a low heat as you could damage the materials or the beads. The third break-in method is just a hot water soak and then a tumble dry. This is what I do for all of my Surefire variety type bags as those materials break in really quickly. And it's a little bit less risky than using some of the other break-in methods we'll go over today. For this method, I like to get the water pretty warm, not super hot, but still a good warm temperature. I'll take the bags underneath the water and kind of start massaging them with my hands, really try to work in the material a little bit. We're not adding any conditioner or any other break-in method to them, so it's okay to work them in. They're not gonna get too broken in, but I really like to work that water in there. Once I've completed it with all four bags, I'll put them in a bowl and fill the bowl up to the top with water. Once it's filled up to the top, you gotta reach in and really press out the air out of it, otherwise the bags will float to the top. You want them completely submerged. Once I'll have them completely submerged, I'll usually let them sit in here for about an hour. Then I'll take them out, throw them into tumble dry for like an hour, hour and a half. It really works them in good without the risk of using other materials on them. So before I put them in the dryer though, one thing to note, you wanna lift up the bag, usually at a corner down like this, and squeeze the material. It'll really start draining the water out of the beads. You wanna get as much of the water out of the bag as you can before you throw it in the dryer to tumble. Just helps really dry them out without holding all that water. Then once you have them all ready to go, you throw them in the dryer and do that normal tumble. The fourth method of breaking in bags is using a little bit of hair conditioner. Now it's important which conditioner that you pick. You don't want any silicones or parabens as those can leave harmful residue on the material once you're complete. And you're also gonna need some soap. A lot of people use Dawn, but any kind of soap that also has no parabens, silicones, usually I have organic soap here, will do the trick for this. I use these on bags that are a little bit stiffer than you know the Surefire type material. They need a little bit of extra help working them in. It's a little bit less strong than using a softener, but it really does the trick and works them in well. For this method, I'm gonna get the water the same temp we had it before, so in between warm and hot. I'm gonna get the bags completely soaked. Work them in a little bit with my hands. Then I'm gonna grab our conditioner. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a line on it, so just like one line like that. Rub it in. To get it nice and rubbed in, you really wanna work on the, the sides, the seam, the corners, getting really pushed into this material. For this bag in particular, I'm only doing this one side. Uh, you can do both sides of the material, so you just flip it over and rub in the other side. But I'm really working in, pushing in those corners, pushing in that stitching. After I finish kind of putting the conditioner on, I'll set this bag aside, and then I'll do all four bags like that with the conditioner, then I'll grab the first bag that I started with and then I'll rinse out all the conditioner. So you kind of let it sit just for a couple minutes while you're doing 
the conditioner step of the other bag. So I don't let it, some people let it sit for a really long time. I like to kind of wash it out decently soon after I do it. But you gotta make sure you really wash this conditioner out of there, out of that material. I'm really kind of rubbing it, pressing in the beads, working in the material while I'm squeezing the conditioner out. Now, the next step is really important for this method, which is the soap, right? So a lot of people use Dawn. As long as you have, I have an organic soap here, something with no parabens. You're gonna rub that soap into the material you just had the conditioner on. Same way you just did the conditioner, but you really wanna get it sudded up and work in the soap as well. The reason you need to work in the soap is the soap will help get all that conditioner, that's the residue that's left over, out of the fabric. And if that residue or conditioner stays in there, after you dry it, the bags will almost still feel wet. Like you can still feel that conditioner in there and it'll permanently speed up the material. So you really don't wanna speed up the material. You wanna keep it where it's at. So this soap really helps to get all the residual conditioner out of that. So I rub the soap in there really good. Same thing I did with the conditioner. I'm gonna squeeze it out. You're gonna keep rinsing it with water and squeezing until you stop seeing suds coming out of the bag meaning that all the soap has been rinsed out. Once you have all the suds rinsed out, you're gonna do what I did before with the soap and squeeze all the water the corner down out of the bag. Get all the main water out of the bag. If you're seeing any suds come out while you're doing this squeezing, then you need to go back and rinse some more because there's still some soap in there. Once you have everything rinsed out, these are ready to go in that tumble for that hour, an hour and a half on low, and they should feel really nice. The fifth method of breaking in bags is using a little bit of softener. I like using Downy Wrinkle Guard. I feel like it's a little bit less strong than some softeners. It's gentle on the materials and really doesn't overbreak them in too much. I usually do this with carpet bags that I need to soften up a little bit or really tough bags that I'm looking to work in. It'll really soften up the material, make it a lot more workable quickly, but word of caution, don't use too much. You can really wreck the materials of the bag. For this method, we're gonna throw the bags in the washing machine with some of that wrinkle guard. So if you have an agitator like I do, I like throwing a couple towels in the bottom to kind of give the bag some padding. Then I'll take my bags and I'll just throw them in the bottom of the washing machine. My softener goes in this little hole here. So I fill up the cap, not all the way to max. I usually do like halfway. Remember, you can always add more softener or break them in more later. You can never unbreak them in, which is why this method is definitely tread with caution. In addition to the softener, I like to throw in a little bit of my normal detergent to help kind of wash out the softener the same way that you do with the conditioner. Just add a little detergent. Then I have it sent on a gentle setting, medium load. I'm gonna run my normal wash cycle. And that should soften up the bags a little bit. After that wash cycle is complete, I'm gonna throw them in the dryer to tumble on low for about an hour to hour and a half, same as all my other methods. The sixth method for breaking in bags is boiling. This is the riskiest method in my opinion. A lot of people swear by it, but you have to work with caution. If you boil for too long, you can damage the materials or melt the beads inside. So I'm gonna fill a pot full of clean filtered water to not have anything extra in the water, turn on the heat and get it up to a boil. Once the water is boiling, I'm gonna turn the heat down to low. I'll take the bag and I'll set the bag in the water. I usually use my tongs to press it down into the water to squeeze all the air out to get it to sit underneath the water. Once it's pressed down underneath, I'll either hold it here but instantly set a timer for two minutes. I only do two minutes per bag. That's what I've found does not damage the bags. After the two minutes is up, I'm gonna grab the bag with the tongs, drain out as much of the water as I can. And then I'm gonna set the bags on a towel next to the pot and I'll move on to my next bag. After I've done a two minute boil with each bag, I'll let the bags cool off and dry on a towel next to the pot, and then I'll take it down and do that normal hour to hour and a half tumble on low to finish the break-in. This has been lesson three on how to break in your cornhole bags. There's a lot of variations to these methods that I listed today, but these are the ways that I do it and the ways that work for me the best. I hope you guys learned something and are able to use this for your bags in the future. If you guys like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate you stopping by for another video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, guys.